want to uh, start off our first conversation um, about fatherhood. You know, um, a lot of us as black men in America have variety of upbringings, whether our parents were in the household, whether we had single parents um, or whether we've lost our parents. You know what I mean? It's 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 been a variety of upbringings. And I think this this timing of this conversation is super imperative to our growth. And just having this conversation is super imperative to our growth. Um, so, you know what it is to be a man. Um, Oh, just understanding manhood is 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 like any other gender socialization is a learned process. You know what I mean? And how we, you know, understand what a man is is you know from our fathers, from media, from from all of those examples. So it's like now that a lot of us, or even a few of us, have come into fatherhood, Lincoln. Um, want to start the conversation off with just understanding your perception of, uh, of, of what manhood is and then transitioning that into like the connection that a father has with his son. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> let's start with the connection of father and son. I mean, okay. mm-hmm. the connection of father and son, um, you know, if you think uh, spiritually and religiously, I mean, the connection between, God and, and 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 Jesus, our Messiah. Um, the 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 relationship is um, is critical, um, and it's one of the things that um, if if lost or if not, uh, you know, if, if there's some separation, has the ability to cause some some challenges, some trauma, right? I mean, you know, uh, I think that, uh, and I base a lot of stuff that I talk about in, in my belief in Christianity, right? So, you know, I think about, um, you know, uh, Jesus always feeling his father, but then at one point in time when he didn't, he said, why have you forsaken me? He felt all the power that he had access to. And he said, why, why have you forsaken me? And I think about that um, as it relates to absence and, and presence, really, I'll say presence actually, um, because there's something about feeling presence. Uh, there's something about feeling presence in a room. There's something about feeling presence, you know, in your, your life, uh, you know, now, when we're, now that we're socially distant, you know, that the, the lack of presence, uh, to a certain degree, you know, I think we've all felt some ramification of that and we don't yet know how, what we, what, what we will experience, mm-hmm. uh, mm-hmm. after that. Yeah. But, you know, having an example, you know, if we were, if we, in the beginning, we were made in the image of God, in the image of a father, it's the same thing. So we're made and we are uh, birthed, you know, uh, most likely naturally as, as men uh, with the same uh, ge- uh, genetic makeup, genitalia, mm-hmm. look, mm-hmm. Uh, my son looks just like me. If you put <laughs> They yeah, yeah, yeah. together, they look exactly yeah. the same. Yeah. And there are things that um, that are learned, uh, that that you learn um, through through presence, but there's things that are just carried through your blood, through your, through your, through your DNA. And all of those things are not good. Correct. Most of them are good. Yeah. Yeah. Most of those things yeah. are good. Um, 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 but some, some are not, as good as they they could be um and so you know before you even talk about manhood you had to just talk about personhood you know mm-hmm. being what it takes to create a person because i don't think that there's i mean yes there are definitely things that make up a man there are definitely things that make up a woman uh you know i'm i'm continuing to learn uh uh of, of those that um that have uh that that wish to not uh, identify in their gender, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and, and understand what that uh, line of thinking is for them and their experience. Um, but but either way, we're still people, right? Correct. And so as a child growing up, as a son growing up, um, you there are certain characteristics that make up children. There are certain things that that they have that are natural and innate in every child. So then so so then we'll say in every boy. Right. And those things are feeling valuable, mm-hmm. feeling vulnerable, being able to yeah. be imperfect, uh, dependent, and immature. Mm-hmm. Um, those are natural. Those are natural characteristics, 
and mm -hmm. any shift between one of those things or another, any effect that uh, someone, usually your parent or an mm -hmm. older individual has during that childhood time period when you're supposed to be able to naturally be imperfect. My four-year-old son, mm -hmm. he should naturally be able to spill milk as he did last night. <laughs> and, um, right. and it is what I do, my reaction to his imperfection uh, it makes up how he develops into being a man, right? Mm -hmm. uh, it, 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 the, the things that I might cause, so if, so if I look at him a certain way based upon, he's naturally imperfect, so as a child, and he does something wrong, and if I yell and scream at him, first of all, that's, you know, verbal abuse. If I cuss him out, I'm yelling and screaming at him, particularly as a little kid. Um, if I look at him a certain way with a certain level of disdain, it really doesn't even fit it. It was milk. What did I say? Don't cry over milk. It's a mistake. You know what I'm saying? It's not intentional. But yeah. if you look at, you know, when you do certain things a certain way, then it has the ability to cause a certain level of shame. Right. And there, um, you know, there are a lot of different things that go into it. So, you know, I just think about that, you know, to your question about about manhood, you cannot mm -hmm. go into talking about manhood until you talk about childhood and boyhood. Mm -hmm. And we have a tendency to make uh, and many people said this uh, over and over. We have a tendency, especially in our community, to make our black boys men while they're still boys. I mean, mm -hmm. your frontal lobe man. is not That's developed. True, yeah, your frontal lobe is not fully developed. Assuming you haven't experienced no level of abuse, uh, mm -hmm. and, and, and abuse is a, a sometimes is a jarring word for people. And I can talk a little bit more about you know the different types of abuse that exist. Assuming mm -hmm. you have experienced no abuse whatsoever. You grew up mm -hmm. in a completely functional home. Uh, your brain is developed, uh, is fully developed at 23, and then you're a man. So right. you have 18-year-olds, 17-year-olds, 16-year-olds, maybe 12-year-olds that are expected to be treated, that are treated like men that are still boys, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you have 30-year-olds that, yes, you're an adult now, so you have the expectation of being, uh, having the responsibilities of a man Right. But if you have experienced certain things that have stunted your growth and development as a child, you 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 might still be a boy, actually, right? right? right. In terms of your in terms of your development, so right. you know, you, you you know, we can talk about all the things that go into right. masculinity as it relates to manhood, but I think yeah. we, we spend so much on that mm -hmm. topic that we miss the other things that are just natural characteristics of what makes a person a person, what makes the feelings that you have real and valuable and, uh, you know, and, and uh, sort of authenticate like your experience, right? So I, I do have a question. I have a question for you. Um, the question that I do have for you, Lincoln, is how has your, I guess, and, and not to shift it too much, yeah. Um, I know that you, you understand like what your identity is, um, yeah. and giving the breakdown of manhood for boyhood to childhood to manhood. Um, I definitely want to pivot, you know, just because of time, I want to pivot into like where you are. Right. And how has, yeah. how has you as a single black man, um, how has that transition been as a, as a, uh, as a single, as a single man? Um, business owner, right? How's that transition been into the father um, business owner? Like, how has that transition been for you? Um, yeah, and into that. Yeah, I mean, it's. I mean, it's been great because first of all, you have a you know you have a legacy. You know, as an entrepreneur mm -hmm. and someone that is legacy minded, and automatically yeah. think that I have the potential of passing something down to my son. Or over, mm. to him, or over to him, maybe not down mm. to him, but over to him at the proper time. Right. Um, and, you know, it's great. It's fulfilling. And it makes me work harder to make to ensure that the things that, you know, I do 
always has him in mind. How, how what are the things that, that we do in business and in life? You know, how is it having in mind? And and it's great. I mean, this time of uh, uh, of being sort of sheltered in place is yeah. interesting. Um, particularly, yeah. <laughs> yeah, particularly you know, like as a as a, as a single father. Um, um. And having, you know, like right now it's me and my son and he's watching TV. And so he's, uh, um, it's just, it's, it's just he and I. And so I try to invite him into, to, to see what I do. He do he may, he may not understand a lot of it, but, you know, I like when he sits next to me, when he sees people that I'm talking to or, or he goes to a meeting with me or anything like that. Um, mm -hmm. that's important, but I have to make sure that. I don't do that out of convenience because I'm working too hard, right? Mm -hmm. um, or, and, and I'm not paying attention to the things that he needs um, as, you know, going back to the natural characters of the child, like he needs right. to feel valued, right? So does he feel valued um, uh, if I am working and doing something and I'm just kind of taking him along and not really paying attention, right? And so I have to be really cognizant of uh, of that and how he might feel and respond to 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 any situation that he's in with me. Right, right. right. And Lincoln, um, <clears throat> as far as the characteristics goes, um, you know when. <laughs> All right, so 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 now being that we are in 2020 and we have many examples of how these children who are born and you know even past the millennials um these set of children we can all agree that these are different breed of kids like yeah. different across the board emotionally physically the time the space the like their mental progression versus our mental progression and you know when um there would be a scenario where they'd be like oh well this kid just needs a a, a, a well this kid should have been spanked growing up you know what i mean and then we always say oh well well i got spanked you know so look at me everything worked out great you know what i'm saying yeah, so right. <laughs> but like we didn't really turn out great <laughs> you know what i mean like I think we did all right <laughs> i mean like i mean like we did all right but at the same time in that approach a lot of you know, unaddressed traumas, uh, uh, unrecognized, uh, um, like different things that we just were like, like neglected on. Would you say that there needs to be a balance of both? Because ultimately I don't have kids yet. Okay. So I know for me, I, I don't know, like there's been one time in my life where I was just like, you know what? I can't wait for that one opportunity where I could be like, yo, go pick the stick off the tree. Like, I always wanted to do that just for the sake of picking a stick off the tree. You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying I'm going to beat you to death, but yeah, I yeah. wanted to go through that. You know what I'm saying? But like, do you think that there needs to be a balance of both? Or do you think that we need to totally rid what we've learned and just come up with a whole new narrative? I think that first of all, um, uh, spanking a kid with any instrument is us just doing what uh, slave masters did to us. Mm -hmm. It is a learned behavior that's passed down, right? Mm -hmm. So I don't, mm -hmm. I don't believe in not disciplining my child, mm -hmm. but there are other ways of doing it. And I think it's out of convenience that we say, let me go get an instrument. I mean, what makes you feel like you need to inflict any level of physical pain on a child mm -hmm. to, to get them to understand? Now, it's often that people do that because they don't have the language to discipline them properly, right? Mm -hmm. To course correct their mm -hmm. behavior properly. And they might and they might actually be, you know, in a lot of cases that I've seen, people are taking taking out frustration on their kid through discipline that has nothing to do with the child, has nothing to do with what they did, right? So there's there's I don't think that there's a I don't think that there's a balance of should you spank a child or not. I don't believe in it personally. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I think in terms of hard spanking, now I get my two fingers and tap my son on the leg uh, if, if, if I absolutely cannot get his attention, but he mm -hmm. knows, uh, but he knows my voice well enough to know when I'm serious about something. And a child is not going to respect you disciplining uh, them if they didn't 
uh, if they haven't felt love from you first. You know what I'm saying? And so uh, it's easier for me to course correct uh, Montgomery's behavior if it needs to be uh, with just my language and not e and not even yelling and screaming at him. Just 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 telling him like this, you know, hey, like we were in the store today, your mask fell. Hey, buddy, don't forget to turn, put your uh, or put your mask back on. Remember, but mm -hmm. but dad, I just forgot. I know you forgot, and I'm just reminding you. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm doing. I don't need to say. I don't need to. Montgomery, put put your mask on. Why are your mask not on? Mm -hmm. Come here. Mm -hmm. What is that? Yeah. What does that achieve? Yeah, 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 yeah. He did not learn because what he was communicating. And as I said, Montgomery like that. Now he's coming thinking he did something wrong. <laughs> <laughs> that was just a <laughs> right. So he's like, what did yeah. I do? I didn't do anything. But yeah. what he, because what he communicated was, Daddy, I just forgot. It wasn't that mm -hmm. I intentionally took it off, but I just forgot. So my language and response is, okay, I'm just reminding you because you forgot. And, yeah. and 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 that's it. Now, a kid, all kids are different. Some kids might need you to reinforce that in different ways. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. but the way that I choose to do it um, uh, is just by making sure that I listen and hear him as much as possible, because mm -hmm. I know that that's what I wanted. Grow. I wanted more of that growing up. So I don't want to make the same faux pas that have been passed down through generations. You know, I don't right. want to do the same types of things that 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 have happened in generations uh, um, to, to, to my son. I said when he was born, the, the curse stops here. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so so I, I guess my, my question is is this, and I think the question that a lot of fathers and a lot of men, men going into or walking into fatherhood, fatherhood would have asked themselves. Um, and that is, you know, you ever like, do you ever question if you are, um, if you are enough, or, or are you doing enough, or, or, you know, that form of doubt that bowls up in your mind? Like, do you have those moments? Oh yeah, I mean, why, I was transparent. I was terrified of being a dad. Yeah. I was, I was tear, and I still feel like I'm not doing enough. I'm more mm -hmm. critical. About, I'm so critical about, you know, what I do, and I'm a really very emotionally expressive person, mm -hmm. um, and so, uh, you know, I can cry real easily, right? <laughs> so, uh, you know, you, bro. like especially in this time when, right? <laughs> we both seen each other cry. So I think, <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. For for, yeah. for me, I think that. Especially now, like the like after so being in the space that we're in and D and I and in marketing and mm -hmm. all of the brands talking about, you know, their commitments to finally caring about black lives and black men and black women. Now, right. Um, yeah. You know, you know, and then we had a Forbes article come out, we had a Good Morning America. I was on Good Morning America. So mm -hmm. I, I literally over the last couple of weeks some days have literally been on back to back to back to back calls like 9 a.m you know to 7 p.m like back to back mm -hmm. you know i'm turning my zoom off to get the lunch delivery to do whatever mm -hmm. and i had to ask my parents to come get him because i was not paying him mm -hmm. any attention i mean i could yeah. i didn't my attention was so because i was also trying to process my feelings and emotions in that moment yeah. and you know and I just remember calling my mom to and dad to check on him to make you know to see what he was doing for the day. Yeah. And I just, and I just remember break I, last week. I just broke down crying because mm. I'm like, why am I so busy that I can't? Why is why am I in this space that I'm so busy mm. that I feel inadequate of taking care of my child? Right. You know what I'm saying? And right. so um, yeah. because I because I want him all the time. You know what I'm saying? I have. I said I'm a single father, but we we I co-parent with his mom. I have him every seven days, right? Mm -hmm. And so I take the time that I have him. Come on now, buddy. <laughs> I take the time that I have with him very seriously. Mm -hmm. I don't like missing out on any anything with him. I mean, I could because I love hanging out with him. I could hang out with him all day, just me and him wow. doing nothing. Wow. You know what I'm saying? And wow. whenever I don't have, whenever I miss out on an hour. 
I, I think I probably put too much pressure on myself by feeling a certain way about that, you know, mm -hmm. um, because, because my, my ideal would be to have him every day, all day, you know, yeah. except for when he needs to go to school. I mean, it's not healthy just to have him all day. He needs to go, you know, socialize with other kids, but especially now, you know, it's one to have him. So, yeah, so it's, it's a, it, it can, it can be a little tough, you know, but I, I have to also learn how to not be as, not be as hard on myself and to recognize and give myself credit. You know, I'm just like, I'm being a bad dad. And, you know, people, you know, what's the interesting thing? And it goes mm -hmm. to, but this goes to the esteem of myself. You know, Cat Williams said, you know, they call it self-esteem because it's esteem of your self, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. Um, some, I would often get people maybe commenting on it LinkedIn, I mean, not LinkedIn, Instagram or something like that and say, oh, you're such a good dad. And you know what the first thing that clicked in my mind was that I told myself is no, you're not. Mm. Why am I telling myself something uh, uh, that is actually a falsehood? I am a good dad. You know what I'm saying? I can say that confidently. I'm a great dad. I'm a damn good dad. I do a great job parenting my child. Do you know what I'm saying? It's he's yeah. about to be five in a couple of weeks. It's taken me this long to say that with the confidence of knowing that that is absolutely true. Do you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Right. Mm -hmm. right. I mean, look, it took it, it. It's it's it's, you know, fatherhood is definitely something that I believe, you know, we and like we all believe changes you on all fronts. You know what I mean? I think for me personally, I I um I always said that I know uh, I, I've always wanted to muster up that change within myself before I had a child. So I can't use the child as a reason now to go to the next level. But regardless of whatever the case may be like that joy comes into your life and you are the person and you are a person who who recognizes that this is a joy who recognizes the challenge who steps up to the plate and and and, and facilitates this 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 epic life project that you have right in front of you you know i mean like just the fact of you even doing that bro like that makes you a, a, a tremendous father you know what i'm saying and just Raising him in this time, in this day, in this age, like it's a significant challenge. But bro, you're doing great, bro. Like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I can learn. I've learned from you in this small setting of having a conversation about fatherhood. You know what I mean? I've learned from you, and within that, so yeah, man. Thank you so much, bro, for your time, for your energy, for your perspective, um, for your knowledge. Um, yeah, man, this was awesome. Yeah, this is great. No, pro no problem. Let me say one thing on. And that just on the expectations of fatherhood is that what I also learned early on when uh, when he was first born is how how low we people how limited people's expectations on dads are. Like I, mm -hmm. I I took him into the bathroom to change his diaper when he was little, and uh, and there was a guy, um, and maybe race has nothing to do with it. There's a white guy that walked out to it, and he said, "Way to get it! Way to get it in there!" You're a great dad. Why? Because wow. he changed his diaper? <laughs> because he changed his diaper? I mean, aren't you supposed to do that? Wow. And so we yeah. have to make sure that we, you know, do celebrate the things that we do well, but uh, but raise the bar on 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 what it is. Changing your kid's diaper doesn't make you a great dad. There were right. many other things that make you a great dad. But I appreciate, you know, um, that uh, y'all invited me on to share and Glad that he's here. <laughs> this yeah. too. Shout out Montgomery. There we go, Say baby. Hi. Montgomery. Yeah. <laughs> hi. yeah, man. Thank you so much, man, for your time and just your knowledge and, and just a glimpse into like that moment, that candid, you unmasking yourself and, and showing us what you know what it really looks like. You know, um, I'm sure we'll have more time in another session, but Man, yeah, I, I and, and after COVID, if anyone wants to babysit, come come get them. <laughs> 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 but yeah, man. All right, my brother. Yes, sir. All right, All right, All right, man. Man. Thank you. Man.